Today we're going to be taking a look at the Pocky King Retro Console, another emulation system straight from China. This one is using a B-Link GT King Android TV box. So obviously it could be used for streaming video off of streaming services and whatever else you wish to use the Android OS for, but this was shipped to me as a retro gaming console with over 20,000 games built in. So that's what we're focusing on. We ain't worried about the rest, but it can do other things. Now, this system uses the Amlogic S922X system on a chip, which from my research has been out for a couple years now, but it's still a fairly reliable chipset for a lot of different uses. This particular device is listed to have a quad core Cortex A73 CPU at 1.8 gigahertz with a hexacore ARM G52 MP6 GPU with four gigabytes of RAM, 64 gigabytes of internal storage. Plus this kit came with a 256 gigabyte micro SD card with an Emulac emulation build pre-installed. That, that's where the over 20,000 games comes in. Now this device also has two USB 3.0 ports and one USB 2.0 port plus your ethernet port and HDMI for video out, obviously. It also came with two shitty wireless PS2 controllers that required two AAA batteries each to use. Now I've used these uh, like types of no-name brand controllers in the past and while they will serve their purpose and function for the most part, they just don't feel great. They have an overall cheap feel to them. Hearing how the buttons sound when pressing should give you a good idea, so take a listen. Now, as always, with any of these builds, any of these systems, typically you can use your own controllers if you desire, and that is the case here as well. Plenty of other controllers will work with this thing. Now, booting this thing up, we are greeted to a fairly standard ROM dump of a build. We got stuff like GameCube, 3DO, PSP, Sega Saturn, Atomus Wave, Naomi, Dreamcast and plenty of other consoles and arcade stuff. All your eight and 16 bit consoles, right? Fairly standard. Now, if you don't like the theme that is set by default here, you could change it or download other themes. Now, as with all other Emulec builds that we've taken a look at, you do have tons of different settings and options to tweak if needed. Controller settings, game video options, emulator options, that kind of thing. There's a lot of stuff that you can do if need be. Now, obviously, all of our old school stuff will run just fine. Super Nintendo, Neo Geo, NES, and so on. All your 8 and 16-bit systems are not going to be an issue. But what about the heavier hitting consoles? Saturn, for example. It's not working well here, especially not compared to some other systems I've recently reviewed on the channel. Games like Panzer Dragoon stutter and flicker having lots of horrible graphics issues and slowdown. Some Saturn stuff they have included will work decently well, but out of the games I tested that worked and worked okay are games that I wouldn't want to play. I don't know what the heck some of this stuff is, but yeah. Mixed bag, always a mixed bag. Now PSP stutters along on the larger, more graphically intense games, while plenty of the lower end graphics wise PSP mini games will play just fine. Now, one thing to note with this build in particular is there are tons of systems here. And these systems, a bunch of them barely have any games included. Things that don't require a lot of space like Game Boy have like only a handful of games. It appears the majority of the space was dedicated to systems that just don't play very well. They're not set up properly or the system can't handle it, that kind of thing. Now, GameCube is another that Maybe some games will play all right and some stutter along. I've tested all these trouble systems with trying to tweak some settings here and there, uh, try to get better results, but mostly my efforts were for nothing. As for me personally, I wasn't getting acceptable performance out of a lot of this stuff. Mixed bag. Maybe some slightly benefited, you know, from some tweaks, but not to where I felt they were actually playable is my point. Now Dreamcast is, is one uh, system that on a build like this, I wouldn't imagine would have issues, and it didn't for the most part, but I, I wound up finding some games that were running a little slower than they should on default settings, which 
doesn't really make sense to me. Like I've I've played some of these games on you know systems that are powered equally or a little lower, you know, around the same, and they had no real issues. So you know maybe some tweaks here and there will be needed. Now Naomi and a Thomas Wave also shouldn't have any real issues, and they did perform decently well here, but. I did find some instances of Naomi games not loading and just giving an error. ROM dump build. No testing. That's what this is all about. It's all up to you to clean these things up, essentially. 3DO was also on here, but with just two games included. I tested out Iron Angel, and it seemed to play okay, though I'm not extremely familiar with this game, and it just feels like a game that originally would have played like crap. So it's hard to say if it's being emulated poorly or if it just sucked to begin with. But I did notice a few instances of the game slowing down slower than what it already was in certain areas. So I don't know. Is that how the game's supposed to be? So the final two systems that I wound up messing around with. Nintendo 64. Surprisingly well. I mean, you will find some games here and there that will have some slowdown, some you know, graphics issues, whatever, but everything I tested played decently well. You know, any of these builds that have thousands upon thousands of games, it's very hard to test every single one of them, but it's easy to know what the system can handle and go from there and not have to test certain things. But then, you know, if you're building something like this, those more demanding consoles, you test things one by one, but they just, nobody really does that with these kind of builds, you know? Just ROM dump them. That's it. Now, PlayStation 1 really shouldn't have any issues, and no surprise here, it performs just fine from everything I tested. Now, overall, this isn't a horrible device. Like, I'm not knocking this device at all. It's a decently powered device for what it is. It's been out for a little while. It's fairly popular, but setting these things up for emulation builds, it's just like many of you know, these companies out there just they repurpose these older Android boxes and it's not really a well thought out thing. Nothing's tested for compatibility or optimized for performance. You could ROM dump on a device yourself for cheaper or better yet actually learn how to do it and optimize and test along the way. But I understand there is a market for already set up devices for people for one reason or another. You know, they may not wish to build one or download stuff and whatnot. I get it. But the reality is while you know, these devices will function fairly well with most things. If you see all these logos of systems like GameCube, Wii, Sega Saturn all in your face, really means nothing. The games may or may not play and compatibility for individual games could be all over the place. These are things you have to keep in mind when any company is selling something like this. Is It's wishful thinking to feel like you're going to get something that just plays everything that it has on it or that they advertise. It's just not gonna happen for pretty much any of these devices out here. Tweaking and you know changing out emulators, stuff like that can be beneficial, but you're still, you're not getting 100% with everything that is included here. So keep those things in mind. Really do appreciate every single one of y'all. And I will catch you on the next one.